Hi, welcome to this video about charging current. I'm specifically going to talk about charging current and how it can affect the data and the experiments when doing electroanalytical chemistry. So first of all, to say that if you um, like this video, please um, hit the like button and please subscribe to this video because we really want to have um, really lots of feedback from subscribers. So if there's things in this video that you don't see or you want to see uh, more of or you have ideas for further uh, videos and um, please let us know so please do like and subscribe I'm going to jump into it a little bit and say that you know there's lots of types of um, um, electrochemical experiments or electroanalytical experiments there's amperometry and charging current phenomena that's occurring amperometry um, there's obviously um, voltammetric um, experiments and charging current or charging phenomena does occur there now, potentiometry, charging current and charging phenomena doesn't um, occur here, and that's because current doesn't, strictly speaking, pass. Now, there is um, very small amounts of current, but um, the charging phenomena is certainly not as um, explicit as it is in other experiments. Charging current is actually part of the signal when it comes to impedance spectroscopy. Um, and I know I've put this image up in other videos as well, but just to say that all these techniques... Um, are applicable through very small potentiostat type circuits these days. So, and this is important because at ZP we like to focus really on what I would consider modern electroanalytical techniques and includes the instruments as well. So today I'm just going to talk about um, charging current and how it appears um, in um, electroanalytical techniques. So in amperometry, you know, amperometry is an important technique. Um, at least. Well, there's at least a hundred um, different manufacturers these days of glucose strips. Most, a lot of these glucose strips for testing um, diabetics are um, electrochemical, and they all have a charging current phenomena. Um, now, you know, I'm going to first of all give you an, um, an explanation of charging current using, um, for example, ferrocyanide. So we have a solution of ferrocyanide, and we might put it onto um, uh, an electrode system, and we'll put a drop on like that, and then the potential stat will essentially um, in an amperometry experiment um, and by the way we will do videos specifically on amperometry the potential might change from or be step from something like naught um, naught volts versus reference to something like um, 0.25 um, volts or 250 millivolts versus reference um, using a potential stat um, circuit that's what a, um, a potential stat is um, and at which point then we get a um, oxidation of ferrocyanide to ferricyanide and the current jumps up and um, this is a um, it's really a charging current and then it, it relaxes and um, that relaxation by the way can be um, sort of modeled or defined by something called the Cottrell um, equation but it, within that current there's actually a couple of phenomena that are going on and um, so we have total current and the total current is actually proportional to the charging current um, which is really something that sort of happens um, very quickly it's quite high but it's very transient and we also then have often the signal that we're actually interested in electrochemistry which is the faradaic current in this case the faradaic current is due to the oxidation of ferrocyanide by ferricyanide but in the very short window in the, in the initial time window of the amperometric experiment um, the faradaic current i should um, just make that come in here is uh, masked or is underlying the um, charging current. The charging current is really considered to be a non-specific or non-faradaic signal. Faradaic signal just means, or faradaic current just means that it's due to a electrochemical process, i.e. the oxidation of ferrocyanide to ferricyanide. Um, a non-faradaic process, for example, which I will explain in a minute, is, for example, the rearrangement of ions due to the application of that potential so charging current is the current due to a for example change in voltage um, the electrode is essentially acting like a capacitor and it's charging up um, and once it's done so then the essentially the current um, stops flowing and we're just left with the current that we're more interested in which is the faradaic um, current so when you wonder why um, most glucose strips give a result in about five seconds they can't give a result in let's say one millisecond or two milliseconds or three milliseconds because actually a lot of the signal in that region would be um, non-specific um, charging current or call it non-faradaic current and they want the faradaic current so they wait for approximately five seconds 
at which point then they're getting this let's say specific signal um where does this charging current come from so we have this electrode um and for example it's sitting in the solution note in that solution there's some um, ferrocyanide there those fe2 plus ions see those fe2 plus ions specifically note those ones that are next to the um, electrode now what happens is in um, for example an amperometric experiment but it also happens in voltammetric experiments as well a voltage is applied where voltage is changed and in doing so um, the ions are also changing their position relative to in this case um, the positive um, electrode the cation, sorry, the anions are potentially being attracted and the cations are, are being um, repelled. And that's the result. The result is it's a movement of ions, but it's not a specific signal. It's not due to the um, oxidation of Fe3 plus Fe2 plus. In fact, there is a, um, a signal due to that. So we have the charging current, but actually we also have the Faradaic current. And so we have to let that sort of charging current dissipate before we can really measure the Faradaic um, current. Um, I'm just going to mention the Randall circuit. Um, this is something that really appears a lot more in impedance spectroscopy. But it's just to say that, you know, if you have a, um, it's a way of viewing an electrode. And if you put that electrode in solution um, and you apply some, you know, a potential using like something like a potentiostat, the surface can be modeled as if it's um, capacitors and resistors. I know they just sort of dropped that in there, but I just want to sort of s s really comment on this, that actually um, that charging current is because the surface it acts a bit like a um, capacitor. And that's why this equivalent circuit here, this Randall circuit, they have a capacitor in there. The resistor is really telling you what the um, resistance to electron transfer is. So that's what that um, means. But the charging current is really a kind of capacitive um, nature and it does uh, of the electrodes and it does appear a lot in impedance spectroscopy so in impedance spectroscopy they understand that there's this capacitive nature to the electrodes and this charging current and they sort of essentially accept it and it's part of the signal where in other areas like voltammetry and amperometry rather than people sometimes looking at it as a useful feature they kind of see it as, as a, um, a non-specific signal and they try to get rid of it essentially or try to ignore it um, so in voltammetry, um, I know I've just talked about amperometry. In, I've just talked about amperometry. So in amperometry, you go from one voltage to the next. As you do that, there's a charging um, current. It dissipates, and then uh, sort of longer timelines, like some um, approximately, let's say five, you know, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. You're really into your Faradaic um, signal. Voltammetry is really also a um, has a charging nature to it as well and i'll explain that so if we look at linear sweep voltammetry i mean ideally you know in linear sweep voltammetry you know you go from um, one potential to another potential in a certain time but really realistically we do live in a sort of digital world and you know the way these potential stats are really operating um you know they're stepping the voltage in quite small um voltage increments but of course, every time they do that little voltage step, there's actually a little charging current. You know, so what we end up doing is, you know, we end up um, sampling the current quite near the end of the step so that we, in fact, lose that um, charging current. So when I say we, this is what potential stat manufacturers are doing there. When you do linear sweep voltammetry, it's not a linear sweep. It's actually a very tiny staircase of um, voltages because, you know, there's a digital essentially circuit behind of this. Uh, but they sample near the end of the um, voltage holds, let's say for each step, and what you get plotted is actually, um, it's mostly, well, they, they, they try to time it correctly so that actually you get essentially the Faradaic signal and not that charging current. But it does show you that charging current um, is also a phenomenon, not just in amperometry, but it's also a phenomenon um, in voltammetry as well. Um, and so it's the same sort of story as earlier on that you may be at one voltage, you have a little um, step to another voltage in which time you get the um, total current, but actually hidden within that total current is the charging current, which um, the designers of that potential stack would think was not really your, your signal. They think you're more interested in the sort of Faradaic signal. Um, and so they kind of have a sample window um, at the end of that um, step. And that's what's 
essentially happening underneath the hood on Melman potentiostats. So charging current happens whenever you get a change in voltage. It is quite easily identifiable actually in um, amperometry. You know, you turn on the experiment, the voltage gets applied. Um, and if you have no waiting time, the first big spike you get is actually this charging current. But you wait some seconds and then after that, you're really into the kind of um, Faradaic type currents. But it also happens in voltammetry as well. But modern potential stats actually, they kind of, they are not linearly sweeping that voltage. They're actually doing stepwise voltage changes. Um, but the way they sample, um, it means that they kind of try to uh, miss that charging current and mostly give you the Faradaic current. So this is just a quick video really on um, charging current, how it can be a phenomena in um, analytical techniques. I've mostly focused, as you can see today, on um, its that it appears in both amperometric experiments and it can appear in voltammetric experiments as well. So if you want me to talk about um, charging current and maybe in things like um, square wave voltammetry and differential pulse voltammetry, for example, I'd be happy to do so. Please, so please like, please subscribe. Please um, ask questions in the comments below and we can use those comments then to generate um, more videos. Okay, thanks very much. And if you have any questions, um, please leave a comment. Take care, bye-bye.